Good day, fellow investors. I was researching the FTSE, looking at the chemical company, and then I said, why don't I go to look at the largest chemical company in the world, BASF. And you always want this, the stock is down, so why not make a deeper dig into the company? It is a cyclical opportunity. At some point in time, you can make some good money, 50%, 100%, maybe a little bit more plus the dividends there. But let's see at the risk and reward of investing in this at this point in time. Let's start with the stock price overview, business, the sector, the financials, valuation, and then risk and reward. If you enjoyed this stock analysis, made a lot of stock analysis over the last months, so subscribe and smash that like button. Thank you very much. This was uh, Johnson Matty that I was looking at for my research platform and the FTSE, and you can see this, and this is very important, the stock price of BASF and Johnson Matty just follows each other except for here but then it again converged for just a while maybe there was something special going on but there is a lot of correlation why is there so much correlation well because chemicals are a pure commodity it's all about capacity production supply and demand on the market you depend on the customer here that sets the price on what your margins depend, we'll see the squeeze in margins at best, and also the reason why the stock is down so much lately, and even more now, going to lows that we haven't seen from the financial crisis. This is very important. If you look at it, the P ratio is already gone, but the dividend yield is very, very strong, and I sense that the dividend yield is 7%, because they are going to cut it. That's what I also looked in the financials. But let's start with the business that will later translate into the financials and you will get the story a little bit better of what is the risk and reward of investing. Of course, you want to invest with lower risk for higher rewards and you will see how best might fit you. What's the future there? Of course, these projections are always crazy when I look at them, 2050. Okay, it's 20% more. China is the largest chemical market. Okay, so they are going there, 55% of the chemical market. You will see later a lot of investments and of course, everything is changing and their goal is to be in a unique position to deliver long-term value, especially with their Verbund sites, integration of everything. But no matter what, they can do whatever they want and try to do as good as they want and save wherever, but they are still chemicals, materials, some industrial solutions, surface technologies thus dependent on the auto industry that has also its ups and downs. So you might go from good margins to no margins at all. You don't make much money on thin margins in great sales. Okay, nutrition and care, likely more stable and also agricultural solutions. You see here EBIT is higher with agricultural solutions than with surface technologies so it is a tricky big business but it is a business that we need on a daily basis use a little bit less a little bit more depending on the situation with the economy grow development but that little bit less little bit more is huge on BASF's bottom line so the strategic alignment there verbund synergies 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 of course that's the focus and then they try to take advantage of those synergies by being in the right places in the world making what they can at the lowest cost possible for the consumer so that they can beat the competition they have organic growth target for the use of cash and you will see this they have cash, they make cash, but they spend also a lot, a lot on growth. So 28 billion capex, the market capitalization is 40 billion. So in the next five years, they will invest 70% of their market capitalization. That's insane, but a lot of money. If it works, great, but if it doesn't work, you just lost 28 billion. 
And that's also a risk there. You can see here more on the capex investing in China. Also, battery materials. So that's a huge chunk of the capex. But still, 3 billion per year are just invested to maintain existing businesses. And when you invest here, this will go higher and higher to invest. And maybe there will be more investments coming next. But this is really, really a big number. And also, if there is a declining market, lower margins, then the market thinks you're investing 30 billion into something that's very uncertain. That's your market cap. And that's also a reason why the stock price is so low. Will the dividend be cut for the investments? Will the investments be cut? Something will happen. Of course, nobody knows what, but the sense is that something will. And then, of course, uh, the big bet on China. China is now not in the favors of the market or Wall Street. So if you look at this, then you say, okay, BASF is a Chinese company betting everything on uh, the great China and Asia with the Nanjing site already. And they are investing more, more in uh, Xiangyang, if I pronounce that correctly. So huge investments and you will see now something very interesting when it comes to these investments. So if you look at the investments, the projected return is by 2030 of 1 to 1.2 billion in EBITDA. However, they have to invest 10 billion to get to 1 billion of EBITDA. If we make a back of a napkin calculation. As they invest 10 billion, let's say the plant lasts 30 years, so they will need to maintain it with 30 million a year to just keep it at the same level. Let's say that to borrow 10 billion you at 5%, you need 500 million, you pay 100 million in taxes. So the value left over from this is 100 million. Investing 10 billion to get 100 million, you would ask yourself, why? Why? And the reason is, if they don't do it, someone else will do it. So the plan here with this commodity is, we invest 10 billion that nobody else will, so that we get on that island that we get here, and then maybe from 2030 onward, we have a great position in the market, we have great advantages and nobody else is going to build something here or here because we are already here. That's the plan. And they are okay with making value of 100 million. But that's also, this looks good. This is 10%. But that's also the reason why Charlie Munger calls EBITDA bullshit earnings or how they say earnings before everything else that creates value. But this is big business. This is BASF. They are the managements there, of course. More trips to China, more investments, more holidays, etc., etc. That's how it works. This is, again, probably owned by a European pension fund and those are even crazier. So that's another negative long term that one has to check about. But then again, China macroeconomic environment is robust. They say, if you look at Bloomberg Wall Street, they say it's terrible. I think it's somewhere in between. China will be there in 10 years, but it is a risk given all the tensions and you can not back out of it. So they will just do it and hope for the best. But investing 28 billion and hoping for the best is not what you want to hear as an investor. Let's look at the financials. So this is it. So dividend not even growing as fast as it could or as fast as you would expect. What is this? 1, 2% per year. And again, something that I always wonder. So over the last 13 years, they have divested 30 billion of things. This means, okay, you spend 30 billion on something and then you decide, oh, that's not good. Let's buy something else, something more innovative, something that feels better when we make the presentation and us as manager. Why don't you focus on making money on anything on this with Verbund and not just selling, getting into debt, putting into something new? 
always something, and this is perhaps the problem of these old companies and the management there. I think we discussed it with Vodafone also. It's no real grit that's needed to make money. And that's also something to think about when you think about the management. You can have all your targets you want, but the status is far from it, uh, depending on the market. And that's why you depend on the market. And that's very, very dangerous. The outlook there, earnings before and special items, four to eight billion, but interest are there, taxes are there, sales, huge sales. And this can be a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but it has great repercussions on the business. Because if I look at things, sales are already down 13%, so that's a huge hit. EBIT is down 33% and you can see how that affects things there. Of course, this is now adjusted, but still far from something spectacular. Of course, not bad, but what is the true that, of course, when higher prices are there, but working capital took a lot of the cash, what do we have? Investments, 1 billion, they have to pay a lot for the dividend every year and with those cash flows that's the situation it's just enough for the dividend i think a few billion here and there growth investments and that's about it you have from the company they say it's a strong balance sheet 20 billion of financial debt other liabilities equity i just check always what's the goodwill so 13 billion Equity 40 minus 13, so we are at 27, not at 40, just to be precise on the value. And then there's always the question, what is the value of their investments? If they make 100 million, this is not worth 10 billion, this is worth 2 billion maybe, maybe something more. And that's always the question here when you look at the equity, what is really worth depends again on future cash flows. And then you can see here EBIT just for the chemicals. You see in bad situations, they don't make much money. In good situations, they make really, really good money. Materials again, 20% down. And then again, much lower situation there. Let's now go into the valuation using net income value creation over time and of course the dividend. So if I look at this over the last decade, the average net income was around 4 billion. So you are okay. You are at a 10% average earnings yield. Of course, there will be some bad years, likely another year or two bad, especially with the high capex, but they might go back when things normalize to a little bit higher, but that will depend on the situation with the economy. Free cash flows are always a little bit lower than net income. Of course, when net income is lower, the free cash flow can remain stable, but we are there around 4 billion. But if I look at the dividend, it takes 3.3 billion If the net income is 4 billion, there is just 0.7 of else for growth. So they need to borrow or do things. And the growth hasn't been really stellar lately. And therefore, the stock is where it is. Now, on the risk and reward of investing, if I look at this 1% growth plus yield, not spectacular, not bad, but the big risk is, I think, If they cut it for investments, the market hates that. A dividend cut is never priced into the stock. If they cut the dividend, the stock goes down another 25%. And they have already done that. So you can see here, they were forced to cut it a little bit here. 2008, of course, these were extremely good years. So if you look at the trend, cut it a little bit, but they didn't manage to do greatly over the last years. So I'm looking at this. That's why I prefer copper miners. Each mine is different. And if I look well into the mine, I can find competitive advantages. Each chemical plant is not different or really tiny advantages. Then something breaks and there goes your advantage. So 
highly competitive environment. You can make money on this. Why? Because it is essential. Without BASF, the world doesn't go forward. Uh, your phone that you are watching on this is not painted. The material for the glass are not there. So it is essential and it will likely be there. But they have made some huge bets with China that the market doesn't like. And if they now we'll sit on a chair and if there is a recession, a slowdown, we have seen in yesterday's JPM overview that car prices are going down, which means that also car makers will want to pay less, less competition for products, less margins for BASF. And everything is interconnected there and it can look ugly for a year or two years. And if they decide to cut it instead of, I don't know, delay investments which is then again a sunk cost so uh, if they go into debt interest rates are already higher so it's a delicate situation and i think here it's about owning if you want to own this company for the long term and be ready if there is a dividend cut to weather the ugly and perhaps buy more on the dips i think you can make money on this so this is another cyclical opportunity I prefer those competitive advantages. Maybe the Verbund site in China will offer a competitive advantage, but competitive advantages in China, there is also the Chinese that are not staying still. So not for me to follow. That's why I made this video. I dig a little bit deeper into to understand a little bit more the chemicals and the sector. But uh, again, you always learn something while you look at things. It will not go on the covered list on my stock market research platform. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Check what I do. And I'll see you on the next video.